I'm sure you've heard the phrase hit down on the ball probably for your entire golf career and maybe you're doing it very well but maybe you're not and I know a lot of people out there are kind of casting and scooping and hitting up on the ball and other people that phrase hit down on the ball is giving them really bad mental imagery for hitting the ball correctly. As my mentor Mike Austin always used to say, golf is mental imagery. If I can put the right image into a golfer's head, they can make enormous strides in a very short amount of time with their game. So right after this, let's take a little deeper look into the phrase hit down on it. And I think I'd like to give you an alternative, an image that's gonna help you hit it longer and straighter too. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I'm on a mission to hit the ball longer and straighter, not only off the tee, but all the way down the fairway into the green because being able to find your ball for 18 holes without ever even having to look is a really nice feeling. Playing with one golf ball for 18 holes, how many of you do that on a regular basis? So hey, if you think that sounds like a lot of fun, you'd like to hit more fairways green, get a lot more distance out of your drives, then by all means, join us. Hit the subscribe button. Like this video at the end if you got some benefit and please leave a comment. All right, we're talking about the phrase. What is it, this is the second, maybe the second golf phrase ever invented after keep your head down is hit down on the ball. And fortunately, I think this actually messes up more people than it helps. See, when a lot of people, they go to try to hit down on the ball, they end up kind of using the arms only and they don't end up with a lot of body turn because it kind of insinuates that you're going to just strike the ground and kind of stop or you have like kind of an aiming point down at the ground you're going to end up kind of chopping at it too steeply i'll show you from this angle so hitting down see that i'm i'm really steeply down into the ground but not necessarily hitting in front of the ball at all and certainly not going to get any power not going to get any accuracy out of a a swipe like that because there's just not a lot of body usage it's kind of just arms pulling down to the ground which is the habit of most average golfers they just simply don't employ enough shift and turn and they employ too much arm pulling down and so that root could come right back to the idea that hey you're supposed to hit down to make the ball go up. Right now, technically, if you were to go back and rewind to the swing I made at the beginning of the video, you would see that I have a negative angle of attack. In other words, I, technically I did hit down on the ball. However, I think this mental image, like I said, is very bad. And I think I'd like to help you by replacing that image with a, another image. So a negative angle of attack, in other words, the club is still gently descending as it strikes the ball, I think it's better to think of it as controlling your low point and getting your low point in front of the ball. So it doesn't feel like you're hitting down at this point. It just feels like you're trying to locate the low point in front of the ball. Um, I've got my swoosh stick here to give you a really, really cool um, alternate image that I think is going to help you get your low point in front of the ball and get your club head sped up by helping you use more weight shift and body turn and less pulling of the arms in the intention of striking down on the ball. So let's take a look. Now, if we were to extend the natural, natural arc of the swing from impact, or let's say we'll start at the low point, about three inches in front of the ball or so on an iron. Now the club is gonna go forward but also leftwards and upwards in an arc this way. So it's going back around to the left again in the exit, which can be uh, really intimidating for slicers because they feel like they're, it's gonna make them cut across. But see, I can still come from the inside and exit high and around to the left. So most of us who are struggling with hitting our irons and getting a correct low point, we de definitely tend to hit behind the ball so we'd like to practice making the low point. In this case, with the swoosh, we're gonna make a swoosh sound. We're gonna over-exaggerate around the curve of the swing. So we have the correct curve that we want the club head to travel in. 
And now it's just a matter of when we want the maximum speed to be, or the swoosh. So I'm going to try to locate the swoosh around the corner, around the arc. This would be 90 degrees. So I'm going to try to put it maybe 70 degrees out in front of the ball, like this. And one more. You could see that my arms were straight for the only time in the swing, right about here, with the shaft of this stick coming back at my chin or my sternum. This will be the fastest point of the swing. This would be a slight exaggeration, of course, but that's what a lot of us need. You'll also notice that if you look at back at that slow-mo again, you'll see that my body is really shifting and turning almost in an exaggerated way but certainly I'm throwing the sequence compared to doing this you see my body's not really moving much at all and my arms are really trying to do most of the work here and instead I'm letting the body and the shift do as much work as possible and now I can allow the arms to kind of relax get driven around by the body as they just kind of go along for the ride and that's what a good swing really feels like, is that the arms are almost not adding anything to the swing. It's just like a turn and a swoosh. All right, I'm gonna hit a few now with the intention again of turning and swooshing the club around the corner. So my goal is to swoosh somewhere out in front, but you'll see that I'm gonna catch it with a little bit of downstrike. So I feel like I'm hitting, swinging up and left. So here I go, I'm going to try to swing up and left. All right, so that was a five iron struck. And you can see up here, I put the data from the track man uh, up in the corner here. You can see that the angle of attack there was downwards 2.2 degrees. So despite the fact that I was trying to hit up and left, I still ended up with a little bit of a downstrike on that. Again, because we're not trying to slam the club down into the turf, but instead, if I swoosh out in front, it's going to ensure that I've got a forward leaning club shaft at the moment of strike like this with a low point slightly in front of the ball. That's where the club will reach its lowest point in the turf. And so of course, even though it feels like I'm hitting up and around to the left, I'm actually hitting down simply because I'm catching the ball just before the club reaches its lowest point. All right, so this mental image has really a ton of great benefits to it. Number one, of course, moving the low point in front ensures that you're going to get rid of some of those fat and thin shots. But also, if you move in the low point correctly in front, you get this forward leaning shaft, as mentioned, which really allows you to compress the ball more. You're also getting more speed because you've really innervated that shift of weight to the left foot and the turn of the chest is really making the arms and hands go faster. All right, so those of you at home who are either suffering from some of these mishits, fat and thin, kind of chunk shots, or just a general lack of club head speed, this drill is definitely for you. I hope you go out and give it a try. Practice out in the yard a bunch of times putting this swoosh out in front. You'll see it's going to start to activate all the big muscles of the body that are essential and creating power and controlling the low point. All right, this is feeling pretty good. So I'm gonna go back and hit some more uh, five irons here, um, practicing swooshing up and left. Um, I'm Steve, thanks for watching. Thanks so much for helping my channel grow. And thanks to Golf Development Complex in Moore Park, California for supplying another beautiful day. And as always, I'll either see you in the next video 
or I hope to see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Take good care.